Uh, I'm going to explain uh, the GMN model uh, with Python programming. Then you can understand simple how we can do. So first we will implement the k-means clustering, and then we will implement the GMN model. So now let us understand. So first, what we will implement? We will implement uh, or we will implement this GMN model by importing the some libraries, and those libraries are the Pandas library, Matplot, Lib library. Why I'm taking this library because uh, I have a data set that is clustering underscore GMN. And this contained some information. So from that portion, uh, we need to keep in mind uh, which uh, data point I must take for the plotting purpose for making the cluster. So from this portion, we need to understand how we can choose and which features I must use. So now let us understand this concept properly. So our first step was to import the some libraries and read the data set. And after reading the data set, if I'm plotting uh, or I'm printing, Top five data from the data set, then you can see weight and height. These are the two features we have over here. And by using these two features, we can make the cluster. Okay. So now, before making the cluster, just let me know once again the data set is visible. I have just printed only the five top five rows only. Uh, is it visible to all? Yes, sir. sir okay. Could you show the total file of the data set. Yes, sir, definitely. In the next part, we have actually. In the next cell, I have. So let us okay. know the size of the data. Let us use the let us know, know the size of the data set. So we have a simple method data dot shape. So now you will be able to understand. We have the two columns and these are the two features and 500 rows. So from this portion, you will be able to understand the size of the our data set. Now that is sufficient uh, data set size. We can understand the concept properly. Now what is I'm doing right now? With the help of the these two data points, I'm plotting the data point followed by the weight and height on the my graph. And one could be the X, one could be the Y. And Y means I'm talking about the dependent variable, or X, I'm, X means I'm talking about the dependent or independent variable. So X would be your ind independent variable. So uh, weight is basically uh, now I'm representing weight as an independent variable, that is Y. Sorry, X. We're talking about the height. So height is basically depend on the weight. See, this is the only simple program for understanding proper modeling. So I'm plotting this information by using the scatter data. And why why these uh, information will plot into the form of the non-circular way like this one? Why? Because the data values we are having, or what is the data set I am using? What is the feature I am using? So it make this is a case. We can have this kind of the representation of our graph over here. You can see. Now uh, let me show. See. So what is the next step over here? Our next step is to display the graph of the data points and how the data point will be displayed over the graph. So I'm using the scatter graph. So a scatter graph is basically used to graph and to scatter the data plot into the points. Now. You will able to see this diagram now. You will be able to see this diagram. Can you yes. able to see? Yes. Okay. So uh, from this point, just can you tell me now how many clusters could be? One, two, three, four, so five. Three clusters. Three clusters. Uh, can we have the four? Yes, sir. We can. So there are uh, some possibilities. We can have the four cluster. We can have the three cluster because uh, it looks like that we can have. But uh, from this point, uh, we are not able to understand how many cluster, how many data points are overlapping. Okay, so that is a reason we are not able to justify our point properly. So now let us understand the. Let us display all these data points with the help of the our k-means clustering first. Then we will decide what is the drawback we are finding. Okay, so just now let us understand this concept right now. So we are training the model of the k-means clustering model. So it means what we are doing, we are building the model. So how we can build our model of the k-means by using the k-means clustering? It's simple. By using the cluster library from the sklearn package, we will import k-means class. And from the k-means class, we can pass so many uh, parameters. If you remember the n number, n cluster means number of the clusters. In it, what is the k-means you are using? So if you're not choosing the random, it will be the default for the initializing the center. That is the point, please keep in mind. The old that is the tolerance, relative tolerance we have used, if you remember. Okay, so other parameter, what is the algorithm parameter you are using, Alcan. Okay, so we have used so many features. 
So, but here I am not using the other parameter. I am passing the important parameter that is the number of the cluster. So, as per the our observed scenario, we can see there could be the four different cluster. So, I am passing the cluster size that is only the four, and I am fitting the model toward the my these four clusters. So, I am just fitting, and now I am predicting the my data. So, what I am predicting because this prediction will decide that is the what which data point belong to the which cluster suppose i am passing the cluster number size that is a four total number of cluster size four so my cluster range will be zero to three that is the point please keep in mind so prediction of the cluster will be done by the k-means that is ranges from the zero to three index and let me show my proof over here okay it is executed yes it is being executing it is being executed internally so we can take three hours no? yeah we can take three hours so okay just uh, uh, we can take no problem yeah we can take but uh, see uh, uh, we uh, we can take we can even we can take the more but uh, just let, let me just let me show the proof by the code and then we will update the value okay it is taking too much time because it is just uh, uh, utilizing the data point properly and they're plotting the different colors in the next graph. The next uh, cell, it will display the. Okay, just taking too much time. So, until that, uh, you please say. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, I was, uh, yes, I was coming on the point. So, until we can understand the its other part. So, data is basically a value which contains your weight and height features. So we are transferring more details same as in the frame. The so frame is a replica of our data. And from this portion, what we are doing, we are adding the one more column. And that is the thing by which we can do just like the your any variable name. And that is to be handled by the height and height features of column. As we can make another column name that is a cluster number, the cluster index value. You can write the cluster index value if you write. I can write over here cluster index. And the, all the copy information that is to be stored by the prediction will be transformed into the this column cluster, and that is a part of the frame. And after that point, after that point, we will display how many columns. Here we have the weight and height and cluster. And I will try to print frame. So automatically, my frame will contain the three important columns: weight, height, and cluster. While actual data will contain only the weight and height. Okay, so now let me show my proof right now. Oh, it's taking too much time. Okay, uh, in between, just let me explain the model. Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, tell me right now. Uh, sir, uh, it's better to take more clusters uh, or less clusters. It means three, two, like that is technically better. No, no, actually, uh, see, uh, see, 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 uh, what you are observing actually. Uh, if you think this part right now, then you can observe over here uh, the lower uh, cluster that is not in a circular way, which is just described only a sim simple cluster. We can up, we can opt this one. However, we can see, and in the middle section, you can see there could be the two clusters, there could be the one cluster. But uh, we can understand there is a some gap, or uh, or uh, these two uh, these two could be represented by the Two different clusters. So we are assuming that there are four number four clusters. We are assuming there are the four clusters. Now it is uh, executed. So yes, it is printing the prediction value. So this prediction value will be the two three two three zero and so on and so. What it contain? It contain the five hundred cluster ranges value. What they are lying means five hundred data point. What they, where they are lying. So you can observe over here. This is the point. Now let us understand this point by this point right now. This is the so first data point is belong to the second third third cluster. This belong to the third cluster. And now this belong to the first and second. And this step is gone for the five hundred times. And if I try to plot all these things, if I'm choosing the four different color blue, green, red, black over here. And I'm just trying to make a loop over here on the cluster. And if I try to print this value, and let us see 
how they will look like so now this now here uh, this graph is visible yes sir okay so from this graph you will able to see four different cluster are generated but green and black these are the two uh, cluster where some data points are may overlapping yes now is it clear some data points are overlapping yes sir Yes, sir. Okay, and that is the biggest problem in the K means some data points are overlapping, but that should not be followed. And if it is following, it means we can say we have a drawback in the K means clustering. And to overcome this problem, we have a GMM model. And instead of the K means, we have to do nothing. We have to use only the GMM model followed by the followed by the our mixture library. So let us start this concept from the very beginning. So far, we have done. We have to import again new all data points. Okay, why I am taking because uh, because uh, we have used uh, the frame variable and which is just replica of that one. So to avoid the confusion, I am just importing all data point and I am keeping the information again new variable that is the data. It is not new; it is a previously, but it will keep the information again. I am executing this code once again and following by the our important library that is the gaussian mixture method the gaussian mixture class from the a mixture library followed by the sklearn package and i'm not doing anything i'm just passing the component that is a four why i'm passing the four component because previously we have decided here we have the four clusters so toward the cluster size we have decided that is a four so we have to put the number of the component four over here and with same with this we need to fit our model toward the data and let us understand this point right now and after that we will see and we will try predict something so in the previous now its model is generated now label label is means production value of the cluster for the gmm so what is the to be contained by the just let me explain once again over just first data point belong to the Third number cluster. Please keep in mind. Second data point belong to the third number cluster. We have decided. So same thing. We will decide its uh, cluster level. Yeah, level means cluster index value. So if I try to print this point, then you will be able to see by the k means cluster first data point belong to the third index. So the second data point belong to the third index. But by the using the GMM model. Same data point belong to the second index, and that is the differences we got it over here. And now from this point, we can see here we have a updated, updated cluster index value by using the GMM because the data distribution internally to be done by the Gaussian distribution method, and that is the beauty of the GMM model. So in the Python programming, we can solve any problem within the some of the uh, some of the uh, Less time compared by the solving the problem by the other programming, and that is the biggest beauty of the Python programming. We have a huge number of library, and we can solve a problem within the some couple of the minutes. So, data frame we have taken as it is. We are making the cluster, and let us understand what they are printing. Now, see for the my proof. First data point belong to the second uh, uh, index column value one. And two. While previously, what we have by the K means, if you remember, by the K means, what we have two two index values. Okay, so that is the biggest difference we are getting. Okay, so that is the reason. And uh, if I am just uh, uh, printing these values over here, same same log logic I am using. I am not doing anything. I am just copying the previous code as we have used for plotting the graph. Same, we are using. But towards our data, but here we have here we have the our information updated way. Okay, so that is the point we need to keep in mind. Now let me print this point right now and see. From this point, you will able to understand colors are changed and uh, no data is overlapping. No data points are overlapping with each other. Now see. You can see this graph, and you can see this graph. Now you will feel. Now you will feel. Are we have the overlap over any data point? No. 
are we having any data point just like overlapping no here we are not having by the gm and that is the reason we use the gm model instead of the k means clustering algorithm see uh, very practically if i talk about the concept right now then you can understand the my words in simple statements 